mycorrhizal fungi are extraordinary organisms. They are uh, ecosystem engineers. They are um, receiving billions of tons of carbon from plants, which they send down into the soil. They're acting as circulatory systems within ecosystems, moving nutrients around. Uh, they are building soils, um, holding soil together. They are um, vital players in the whole uh, planetary ecology. And um, they're able to solve crazy problems that their lives present them with. But we you know so little about how they solve those problems. We need to remember that these are symbiotic organisms. That means to live, they have to actually be attached to plant roots and they have to trade with those plant roots. So they first have to build this physical network foraging for nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen. They need to collect that, bring that back through the network to the plant root and then get carbon in exchange for that. So they have been designing supply chains for hundreds of millions of years and solving very complex problems that exist in nature. What's been a real challenge is just how you image these things, right? They're usually underground and, you know, they grow very slowly. So there's multiple challenges here, but now we have a system where we have a robot instead of a human being doing the microscopy for us. And because it's a robot, it can run 24 seven. And that means within about three years now, we've been able to collect as much data as one human being could have collected in a hundred years. So I'm really excited about the three main findings in our paper. So first, the fungi favor opportunities in the future over gains in the short term. They achieve this by investing in specialized growing tips that act as pathfinders. They lead the exploration into new territory and pull behind them this wave of very intricate lace-like mycelium that's just dense enough to forage for phosphorus. And that's the commodity they can exchange for more carbon. So like a sophisticated supply chain, this allows mycorrhizal fungi to construct networks that are both expansive and efficient. The second lesson is the coolest. Fungi have figured out a way to make the nutrient-rich fluid in their pipes move in two directions at the same time. We know that two-way traffic is more efficient than one-way traffic, but it can also be prone to congestion. So similar to navigation apps tracking vehicle speeds, we measure the traffic flows of the speeds at specific coordinates inside this fungal road system. By following some 100,000 trajectories, we discovered that fungi adapted their flows to deal with congestion by actually widening the vessels that acted as major highways and increasing speeds in resource-hungry areas like plant roots. The third lesson is that fungi use these rules that are very local to the place they're executing them. And yet they manage to achieve control over properties of the entire network without any cumbersome centralized decision-making. So for example, when a growing tip encounters another branch of the network, they bump into each other and they just fuse. And this turns out to be a very elegant strategy for avoiding overbuilding of their roadways while also balancing the need to extract nutrients in a given area while also exploring new areas. The new approaches that we use in this study make it possible to investigate mycorrhizal fungal growth and behavior in unprecedented detail and at an unprecedented scale. These techniques open the door to really exciting future work that can reveal the ways that these living sensing networks regulate the function of ecosystems and the Earth's nutrient cycles.